Uh, I have this mic. Maybe inside here, no? You can check. Inside there. This is a technological institute, sorry, uh, Bangalore. And after the, that, he worked in the software industry for three years in intelligent systems. And uh, after which, he did his MS research from IIT Madras. And, and he joined uh, IIC as a PhD student. Uh, his area of interest includes uh, mechanism design and, uh, and game theory uh, with the applications in social networks. And, and online classrooms, etc. Uh, currently, Rohit is with IBM Research. Uh, Thanks a lot, Ganesh, for uh, the invitation to give a talk and for your kind introduction as well. Okay, so good, uh, good morning, everyone. So, I guess most of you are in your second year, second year, third year BTEC. Is that right? Anybody fourth year? Nobody. Okay, okay, third year exams, exam tension now. Okay. Oh, done, okay. So relaxing in IIC campus. Okay, good. So campus is very beautiful. I recommend all of you to just explore. Uh, have a nice time in the campus. Okay, so let, uh, let me get on with the uh, agenda for today. So I have roughly about 45 minutes to cover an area which is probably more than 100 years old. Okay, so which obviously I will not be able to do a good justice of the job, but my only intention is to uh, basically come uh, give you an introduction to this area so that uh, at a, most of you are computer science graduates, right? All of you, okay. So obviously I was also a computer science B some time back, so I can understand that I didn't understand a head or tail of math that time. So I didn't want to keep this a very math oriented uh, talk. So I'll give you an introduction to the high level aspect of this area, which is very deep and very mathematical as well. Uh, but off late, due to the convergence of so many uh, technologies like cloud computing and computer science, uh, there has been an explosion of this area called economics and computer science, the intersection of these two areas. So, and that has uh, brought a lot of interest to the computer science community to know about this traditionally economics area. This mechanism design is an economics area. So what is com what are we computer science doing in it? So scientists doing in it. So nowadays there's a hell lot of interest from the computer science community to do something in the intersection of mechanism design and computer science. And that's, I'll just give you a flavor of the uh, traditional area of economics, uh, mechanism design as an economics area. Then I will maybe hint out at what, are, what all uh, computer science can do in that. Okay, so what is mechanism design? So I guess you might have had a talk yesterday on game theory, right? So Professor uh, uh, Siddharth Berman gave a talk. Did you guys like the talk? Okay, so then there's a very high chance that you will love mechanism design even more. Okay, So because it is very intricately connected to game theory. So let's see what it is uh, all about. So Mechanism design is basically a systematic look at the design of institutions, they say. Th these words are like economics borrowed institutions and all that. So it's basically a set of uh, rules you'll have to design. In some scenarios, like maybe institutions could mean something like a uh, stock exchange or it could mean auctions. So there are plenty of economic institutions and uh, wherein the uh, design should incorporate strategically uh, strategically uh, behaving individuals in the institution. We'll come to the uh, actual meaning of all this uh, high sounding words uh, soon. But this is a rough uh, or, uh, or uh, I mean a definition of mechanism design where the objective is to come up with a design of a auction for example where the outcome is dictated by a lot of strategic participants. Okay. So the focus is design on design part. How do you design? Uh, more than the analysis, here it's more focused on the design part. And uh, assumption says lot of uh, the agents are strategically behaving. That means strategically says they are self-interested agents, and uh, they hold some important private information which will eventually influence the outcome, which the institution is trying to uh, decide. Okay. So we'll come up, uh, before I go into the details, there has been a 
uh, stalwart researchers in this area and it's not fair to just uh, uh, not mention any of them at least i'll mention a couple of uh, the most significant uh, researchers uh, leonard uh, hurwitz uh, eric maskin and uh, roger myerson uh, eric maskin was in iisc some uh, a couple of times and uh, they they were awarded the nobel prize in 2007 for their work on uh, uh, laying the foundations of mechanism design theory so as you see it's a very important area so let's go into the examples where are what is mechanism design what does it deal about so one thing it deals is about auctions auctions is i am sure everybody knows what's an auction right so uh, please feel free to interrupt me any any time you don't follow any of what i'm saying so i'm also a student like you guys i was just a student recently so feel free so uh, suppose i have my royal enfield 1995 bullet okay now i have to sell it okay so and bullet uh, the older it is better many people say so so now i want to i have a, a lot of potential buyers and uh, i have a particular expectation of my own uh, ask price what uh, value i need for the bullet now how do i decide whom to uh, give it to there are a lot of potential maybe all of you want to buy or maybe the guys at least want to buy so i don't know about the girls maybe now i see girls also buy riding bullets so they are also welcome to join the auction so uh, so basically how do i decide which buyer i should give uh, so this is one one format is auction and there are, in auctions also there are many formats one is each buyer could like it's a sealed bid scenario all of you give me a envelope and write the price you want to give uh, for the bullet i'll open all the uh, i'll get all the bids and then open and give the highest uh, uh, highest uh, uh, bidder the so uh, it could be like round 1 uh, i have uh, in one round i'll get all the bids then i'll announce that this is the person and now again you could revise potentially your bid based on who has been won the auction who is the highest bidder at this round so i could run this many rounds and uh, or i could use this is called as a sequential auction this is called as a simultaneous one shot auction. and uh, it could be any combination of these options. there are many ways to hold these options. now how do i decide which is good right for my scenario so mechanism design basically gives you some properties of many many of these types of auctions so that is one potential area so another is public good like public good is like uh, suppose i want to construct some flyover or in this example i want to, uh, there are a group of office colleagues or friends who want to buy a refrigerator for their lab and obviously they won't get funding from their professor because it, they want for their convenience now they have to fund among themselves now how do i decide how much each should contribute okay so there could be many options again everyone submits a pledge that i will contribute x amount y amount and then i will see after getting all the pledges among my friends whether it covers the expense of the refrigerator or not that could be one or i could keep going around and telling each friend what the what is the how much has already been accumulated in the process so i i told friend a has to cop promise uh, 1000 rupees another friend too has uh, from as 5000 rupees something like that i could keep telling everybody then uh, get the fund like the ganapati mandal uh, collection right that sort of thing so or i could just divide the cost of the expense by n number of people and just say everybody just contribute this so how do i decide uh, which of these options are good right so public goods problem is a very important problem it appears in suppose government wants to construct a flyover which is of public utility now who are the who should pay for the flyover and how much should they pay so typically i may not be interested in fly, funding a flyover why i mean doesn't matter for me but it's a public good so so i am very strategic in that sense so how do i design payment rules in such scenarios so these are couple of examples of uh, mechanism design and uh, what are the i now come up with i think uh, you got a flavor of what is the area about and now i'll come up with some of the key properties of this area 
or what are the uh, key aspects of this area one is in this uh, area everybody is assumed to have some private information and the job of the mechanism designer or who is the social planner or the auctioneer is to come up with a way to elicit the true private information that's very critical in this because i if i ask you how much you give me for the bullet you will say 10 rupees for all you know right but in your mind you value it as some 1.5 lakhs say but you won't immediately bid that amount right so now i want to make you bid 1.5 lakhs how do i do that yeah okay yeah so some sort of a competitive what you are trying to say is some sort of a competitive feel i have to bring in if i ask only you you will say 10 rupees then there is no charm in that right now i'll say the whole class is interested in buying the bullet now you what is your thing then you will be in a defensive mode saying that oh if i bid too less maybe i lose out on the bullet right so so some sort of a, that's what is called multi agent interactions right so there are many agents and the some sort of a effect of the strategic behavior of other participants will force you to tell your own true information so that's the key crux of this area of mechanism design and uh, basically what once i elicit suppose i am able to elicit the true information of the agents and i have to decide the optimal outcome or the outcome in the sense is who am i should allocate the bullet or what should be the cost of the public good project in that sense so the mechanism design is basically involved in these two problems so so in the enfield bullet example the buyer's true willingness to pay pay is the private information how much you are willing to pay for the bullet is is your private which i don't know now i have to make you say that so that's the challenge and buying the refrigerator the colleagues also will have their own evaluation of i can't spend more than 500 rupees for every refrigerator maybe you will have some true willingness to pay pay so that is the private information in this scenario okay so most of the times you won't have any idea about the private information and your challenge is to basically elicit from the participants yeah that's a good question that so the mechanism has to be specified beforehand so you say that okay now i will say that if all of you submit the bids i will award the to the highest bidder and the highest bidder will pay the uh, whatever amount he has uh, bid he has promised to bid in the bid so i will announce this rules beforehand now you you will start strategizing what i have to bid what that is next and once you bid i will follow the procedure i am a trustworthy guy so i will follow what I, as I, as i told in the initial so the rules has to be specified beforehand but my intelligence or my idea is to come up with this nice set of rules which will make you behave truthfully okay so good question anyway so the key aspect is this so i don't know if you can see there is this many times reality will be very different from the truth okay so you will be thinking uh, uh, 1.5 uh, lakh for a bullet but as an auctioneer i will get probably 1000 rupees or uh, i may get 70000 it's never to the true valuation of the so if i use this idea of mechanism design i can make the reality match the truth in some sense so this is a rough idea i mean this is a high level idea we'll see how exactly they do that so here we have to assume a couple of things so a uh, mechanism design a designer herself doesn't know in advance what outcomes are optimal i don't care who wins the bullet okay so i just say whoever is the highest bidder wins the bullet that's it i don't care you win or they win or that person wins i don't care so but uh, the main thing is the participants will themselves generate some information like their bids which will make me select the outcome that's all so i am like just as a middleman type thing you can think of right but what is the problem you are very strategic each of your uh, each of the agents buying the bullet wants to buy the bullet at the least cost possible right 
So they are worried about their own objectives. Each of these agents are worried about themselves. But I as a mechanism designer, I want to award the bullet to the highest valuing customer or agent. So that is my challenge, but you are worried about your own challenge. So now this is a conflict. So that's where mechanism design must be incentive compatible. That means it should reconcile with social and individual goals. My social goal is I want to award it to the guy who or a person who values the bullet most. But at the same time, as an individual, you will have to pay the least amount possible. So that's a conflict there. So this conflict is essentially how to address these type of conflicts is what this mechanism design all about. Is it clear? Anybody having any sorts of doubts or something, you can feel free. Okay. So it has connections to game theory. It has a very deep connections to game theory, which uh, Professor Siddharth talked yesterday. I guess most of you will would have attended his talk as well. So basically it builds upon game theory. Mechanism design is a it's a uh, construct over the game theory. And uh, what game theory does, uh, what uh, Siddharth would have also told you is, it takes rules of the game as given. The matrix is given to you. Uh, and it makes predictions about how people will behave. Whereas here, it's something like, how do I choose the matrix itself in some sense, right? How do I choose the rules of the game so that if, if I choose the ma different matrix, the agents will behave in a way which I want in that way. So it basically mechanism design creates an underlying strategic game and uh, it is very similar to the game theory lecture which you had yesterday attended and basically makes the agent play the strategic game but the game, rules of the game is engineered by me. So that whatever strategic behavior you do is good for me as a mechanism designer. So outcome of a game will depend on not only the choices, but also on other choices. Like that's what I said. It's a multi-agent interaction. That's a very key aspect of this. Many people want the bullet. If only one person, then there is no competition. So how do I handle competition? Okay. So what's the need of having all this? So basically, uh, it basically says that uh, if I want to figure out whether in the bullet example, I should, should I just say, okay, posted price. Like I'll say 2 lakh whoever pays me is gets the bullet. Is that good? Or should I make them bid and get maybe uh, get the bids and then decide how much the pay, uh, price should be. So basically mechanism design will give me some sort of a results which says that, okay, doing posted price is fixed price is good in some scenarios and not good in some scenarios. So it can help us help me to analyze which what I should do for my bullet or for whatever item I'm auctioning. Okay, so this is the and where all we need, where all mechanism design is applied in today's world is there are plenty of areas. So I won't be covering everything. So how to resource division? I have a set of resources. How to divide among a set of uh, participants fair in a fair manner? How do I find stable matchings? How do I match people, jobs to projects and so on? Voting. Voting is an example of mechanism design. How do I determine the who is the winner of an voting outcome, elections? How do I conduct truthful auctions like I just said in the bullet example? Plenty more. How to public good problem? How do I allocate costs? How do I, even it's used in policy making at the government level, how do I regulate policies? And uh, how do I, in stock markets or prediction markets, how do the price vary? If I buy 100 shares of a particular stock, how, do I, how does the price change? Those things are studied under mechanism design. And uh, also in this environment policies, how much should this carbon emissions, this green climate change and all those things, how much should US reduce their emissions? How much should India reduce? In, their, in that also, mechanism design plays a very good. And there are plenty more which I'm not covering. So I'll be primarily covering uh, subject to my time constraints. So I'll cover first two. Maybe if time is there, I'll cover the second. I have time till uh, 12, 12, 15. Okay. Okay. So maybe I won't rush through. Maybe I'll go through one or two examples carefully. 
then you probably i can uh, you can go through more detail yourself so okay so first the problem is of resource allocation uh, i have a how do i divide resources fairly in a fair manner this is called as a cake cutting problem okay so what is the problem the problem involves uh, dividing uh, sorry for the typo there so dividing a heterogeneous resource into subjectively fair manner in a among n agents what does that mean we'll come to that so before that uh, i would like to say that uh, this is a very important problem which is gone more than 70 years of research has gone into this area and uh, it has a uh, relevance in many uh, aspects of computer science policy making and all, all those areas as in for the example this is a cake now uh, there are n agents and i have to divide uh, this cake into n parts but the problem is i can just divide it into n parts that's it that's not a problem but the problem is these are all strategic agents that means some agent prefers the cherry part of the cake right maybe i like this more than the rest of the part maybe some other person likes this part more than the other part so i have preferences over which part i get as well so this is what makes the resource heterogeneous so how do i consider uh, a cake cutting problem or a resource division problem considering the fact that uh, people are uh, uh, very choosy about which part they get they should be happy it should not happen that i get a part and i envy you because you got a cherry part right it should not happen that way so how do i do this this is a very complex problem and there is a lot of initial results uh, in this area as well before that maybe quick uh, this is one of the two slides i have a little bit of math on so maybe you can tolerate me on this so assume that uh, a model for this could be if like you have the zero one interval and uh, you have n agents and you have to divide the cake into sub intervals and different uh, agents will have uh, preferences over which submit uh, sub interval they will get like if i get the whole entire cake i get value 1 utility 1 if i get nothing my value is 0 and in between i can have whatever fraction i want okay so this is a rough model uh, so some uh, if you think of this as a mathematical model now then can i come up with some sort of a fair mechanism for dividing this cake what is the meaning of fair a cake cutting procedure is proportionally fair if every agent can ensure at least she gets 1 by n 1 by n is not 1 by n in fraction 1 by n of her uh, she should think it is 1 by n utility from her perspective it should be 1 by n right so that's a bit different so i can just divide the cake into n parts done everybody will be okay but maybe 1 uh, by n for you is the cherry part of the cake right so i should give you the cherry part then i should balance the other part so i should give a more part of something else to another person right so that sort of problems you will counter so so any guesses on if i have two agents what's a good cake cutting procedure i have a cake i have to divide the cake into two parts and each of uh, it should be half half roughly uh, assume for the moment it's a same uniform cake it's a vanilla cake no cherry business here it's a homogeneous good now how how do i divide the cake one person yeah exactly so that's a very good observation uh, your name ajit good so in the case of single two agents you just one you allow one agent to cut the cake into two pieces so that person will ensure that it is two equally valued pieces whatever it may be half it may be three fourth whatever and uh, the other agent will choose now because it's equally half the other agents can pick up pick up any uh, any of the halves and it will be both of them will think that it is half for them Very simple, right? Three agents. Anybody? If there are th two agents, is fine. Any idea for if there are three agents? Now the same thing will work. Okay. So there is a procedure. Yeah. No, no. Just throw your idea. Even I may not know it's correct or not. Just throw your idea. No problem. Hmm. 
ओके 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 सो यू गेट अ कंसेंसस फॉर वन केक वन पोर्शन यू आर सेइंग ओके दैट्स गुड वन सो मे बी देयर इज अ प्रोसीजर यू आर अवेयर ऑफ दैट प्रोसीजर Yeah, I mean it's a good line of thought. It's excellent uh, thinking, uh, but you should think very carefully in these type of scenarios because uh, it's more uh, subtle than you think, actually. Okay, so let me just go through the due to shortage of time. I don't want to hang around here, but if somebody else has any idea, any other similar idea, they can shoot. Otherwise, I'll just show you the. There are many solutions to this problem. Okay, so uh, it's a like I said, it's a vast area. So one. One thing is one important thing is you should think these are non-cooperative agents. Okay, so I don't want to I don't want to believe you. Okay, so in that setting, okay, there are cooperative solutions. That is a different area. This is in co uh, non-cooperative agents. Okay, so like she said, it should be a consensus. Yeah, so one more person. Uh, okay ah okay okay fine mm -hmm. who says in what order they will tell No, that is you are discriminating, right? So no, sir. What I'm trying to say is, all the three together make people pass, and then they choose one part. No, no. First, first step is not clear. How do they make together three parts? Okay. 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 Your first part is okay. The second part needs a bit. Correction. You are right. Yeah, it's a very good. Yeah. Uh, first person cuts the cake into two parts. Okay. Second, uh, second person. What does he do? There are so many parts now. I just want three cuts, man. Only three cuts. Can I do? Uh, that is you are adding more complications to the matter. Okay, maybe you have to carefully work it out. But I want a simpler solution, something in the lines of which this girl told. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you are also making more cuts from what I understand. Can I make only n cuts or n minus one cuts? If n, are, I mean three are there, can I make two cuts and be done with it? Anybody? Yeah. See, it's a horizontal cake, not the round cake. So. Cut however you want. <laughs> That's all. Like See, that is also some sort of. A, if you turn it around, it's also some rectangle shape only. It's a rectangle cake, assuming. Okay, you. Yeah. 
Third person, what will do? That's two. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I will take all these questions later. I know. Okay. It's one good thing is, as you can see, first observation is it's not so easy, right? It's already people are cutting like anything the cake. Okay. <laughs> so, and uh, we don't know which is correct, which is wrong, and it is. Uh, not so trivial to also say, even if you say proposal, I can't say off, at least I don't know how to say it is right or wrong. You have to show me formally. Okay. So I wanted a very simple intuitive procedure, which I'll explain now. Maybe one more I can take after this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You answer all these queries you are getting now. So, uh, uh, one more thing is, you are forgetting that there is a mechanism designer also. Can you make, um, make use of him also? See, I am a mechanism designer. I want fairness. I am not partial to anybody. Can, I, can you make use of me? Yeah? Uh, only two? Cake is given. Cut is not given. Yeah. You have to make the cut. Okay, okay. Yeah, the rules are known beforehand. Yeah. So make sure that he away so that his loss is Okay. Right. So the first person makes a cut. And the second person, if he makes a cut in which the portion is bigger, he knows that the third person will choose that part. Yeah. He makes sure that he divides the second portion into equal parts. as if the first portion was one and two, he makes sure that the second portion is divided into equal Okay. This I think is okay, but I think it may require more cuts from what I understand. Right? Let me okay. Let me not take uh, any more. We can always discuss because do you mind if I overshoot by ten minutes? Then I will take two more questions. <laughs> I meet up on your lunch, so it's already twelve five. So I think I mean I uh, uh, I don't hope to finish my presentation today, but I want to get you that uh, flavor of this problem. It's a very interesting problem, right? How do I cut a cake? That simple as that, but to make everybody happy, it's by cutting a cake is difficult, right? So that aspect is what I wanted to to carry uh, home today. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me break the suspense. So what is this called? Is called as a Dublin's and Spanier uh, procedure. There are many other procedures also. So what I do? Simple idea. So I am a mechanism designer. I'll hover my knife as I keep hovering over the cake. Any of you can sh uh, uh, shout out, stop. Okay. Then I cut the cake at that point. Then I give you whatever is left of the cake, from left to right I'm going. Whatever is left out, I give it to you. And then I continue the cake. Continue the hovering position. Then somebody else will, and that person, the first person is allocated. He's out of the game. Now the next N minus N agents will uh, shout out, any one of them. Whoever shouts out first, stop, I'll give it to them. Okay. Of course, there are some corner cases like how do I break ties and all that. So, which is, uh, let's not worry about too much complex details right now, but this is a very intuitive procedure, right? You, uh, you can understand. So, this has, can be proved as a proportionally fair mechanism. And there is a lot of uh, uh, literature on this problem and the variants, how do I handle uh, ties and all those things. So, you can look it up as well. Okay, so that's about my cake cutting uh, example. Let me jump to the stable matching problem. Did you find the cake cutting interesting? Okay, cool. So now I'll give you to another damn interesting area. It's called stable matchings. Okay, where have you guys seen matching? No, uh, I, I want applications. Have you used? I know it's there in your textbook. In graph theory, there is a lot of matching algorithms. Have you used matching anytime or do you find a use of matching anywhere? In life, in general, yeah. Marriage, okay. Clothes, okay. Shirt and pant, okay. Okay, terrific. Buying houses, okay. Excellent. Yeah. 
exactly what are what they are matching with what there okay good okay okay good excellent all are excellent answers but uh, we are considered with something called as a stable matching here which is i'll come to it i'll take the first uh, example which uh, student told here it's the marriage problem uh, which uh, most of you will encounter anyway in the uh, near future so you have this uh, set of uh, uh, n uh, agents uh, n men and n women and uh, each of this uh, women will have some preference over the men for example this edge four it means this girl uh, uh, prefers th as a fourth best this man this man and uh, similarly this edge is second preference this edge is first preference this is third preference and similarly the men also have preferences over the women and so on so this is given to you and now the objective is we want to pair up the men and women it's a marriage market like uh, something like bharat matrimony or something you can think of okay so can i do it in a reasonable way i don't want to do a random matching which is disastrous in certain scenarios but uh, suppose i come up with some matching like this so i pair this boy with this girl and so on the blue edges indicate the matching now uh, is it possible to say that this is stable matching so what is the problem with this edge is it just a dotted edge or does it exactly good point so here the girl is matched to her third preference whereas this guy is also matched to his third preference whereas he could if these two deviate from the matching they could get a better preference right this person gets his second preference and this is first and this in technical language is called blocking pair okay so and our objective is to avoid such blocking pairs so this matching is not very stable because two people can break out of the matching and then form a link among themselves and be happier than what they were getting before so yeah yeah good point this this blocking pair this this blocking pair there could be plenty i don't want any okay at least one also should not be there so so it's not stable okay now what is the goal goal is to find stable matchings now what is the problem given the preferences of the agents first can i show that does a stable matching exists for any preference this could be how many possible preferences this girl can have no preference orderings i mean 4 2 3 1 1 2 is a one preference yeah it's four factorial right so now you can see how many possibilities each person can have factorial is a very large number so i want to say something like about stable matching considering any preference of the agents okay so it's quite a complex problem and uh, can i find it quickly as computer scientists we are worried about polynomial time and stuff so can i do it quickly answer is yes and uh, there is a very landmark paper by lloyd shapley and david gale which is called the gale shapley algorithm which basically does this job and it's a very fundamental and profound work uh, which has impacted many areas as you already said okay so so what's the gale shapley algorithm maybe i'll go through this and maybe then uh, i may have to close i think can i go further okay okay so you one of you guys tell me when i have to break so because these are students janta i can take liberty so so later on they will curse me i ate up their lunch and all a lunch time so but it's a very interesting area i think i would recommend you to sit through for a little bit more but in case you are getting bored you tell me i'll stop okay so what's the algorithm on day 1 each man proposes proposes to his favorite woman okay so what does the, what does that mean this blue edge is indicate the proposals okay so this girl gets three proposals these two are not so lucky and this girl gets just one proposal okay from the men and the second the what the women does the women keeps the best proposals among the proposals she has received okay and she rejects the other two sad guys basically so what to do 
Okay, now the men have men don't have any other way. We have to go forward, move on. So they will propose to their next best, which is this guy proposes to this girl, and uh, similarly this person here. Now again, the rejection process ensures. Now the chance of this girl to reject. Girls are famous for rejections, right? Okay, so no pun intended. So it's just a uh, way they this this. Uh, Link is rejected, and she accepts. So you should remember that she had tempor temporarily accepted that link before, in day one. Now she is. It's that's why it's called as a deferred acceptance procedure. That means she said temporarily I will accept you, but if I get a better chance later, I am going to reject you. Okay. So very selfish, no? So okay. But the same works the other way also. Okay, there's a woman proposing man, and man, men do that same thing. Okay, so so basically the uh, algorithm again proceeds in a similar way. Now the the rejected man proposes to the next preference, and so on. And at some point of time, we can we ho we see that everybody is happy. That is, there's no rejections from the women's side. So that says stable matching. It's a fairly intuitive procedure. It's called as a Gill-Shapley algorithm, and uh, there is a landmark result which says that uh, it always terminates with a. This procedure always terminates with a. No matter what the preferences are, uh, it always terminates given that equal number of men and women, all that setting, and uh, there are strict preferences. There is no. I prefer both two men equally. Not that scenario. I have strict preferences over men and women, of course. That so in that sense, this is stable. Okay, so this is the algorithm, and there are plenty of applications. As I already got quite a few responses from you, this is a very uh, fundamental problem, and this could be applied. Somebody told me the students to hospitals matching. So this has been studied by a researcher called Alvin Roth, and he was seeing that before he applied this algorithm, there were many attritions in hospitals in US, and because they were not happy with their match. So uh, in the US, um, after their degrees. They are typically assigned to hospitals, the doctors, and uh, there is there is a lot of attrition in the uh, doctors' uh, side, and they came up with this uh, sort of algorithm, and uh, which led to a uh, much lesser attrition. Uh, they showed empirically it is as well, and because the, it was much more stable, the matching was stable. So this is a very landmark result. It could also be applied in schools to school. I mean, uh, kids to schools, right? So. As kids, uh, maybe uh, they would like some. They have preference over the schools, and schools also have preference over kids. How do I match stable in a stable way? And refugees. This is a more recent problem. In yeah. Yeah. I mean, in this example, it it has. Maybe I prefer the. I mean, I know those two candidates, right? So. I, I may have a preference as well. There are this is a two-sided matching. There are examples of one-sided matching also. That's also a very active area of research. So, but assume that uh, for the moment the hospitals also have a preference. Whichever side I start, uh, should I end up with the same stable matching or uh, can I end up with a different? Stable that I didn't tell. It ends in stable matching. It could be whichever. There there could be multiple stable matching as well. It's not unique. Stable matching may not be unique. I didn't say that. Maybe in particular scenarios, it could be unique. So that's all the research is all about. Can I show it's unique, or if multiple uh, matchings exist, which uh, matching will converge? Will it converge to? All these are further thinking. This is a, that's why the research keeps going on in this. Anybody else? Any doubts? Okay. Yeah, this is I am explaining only two-sided matchings right now. Like one person just told, there are one-sided matchings as well. So that's also a very good area to explore. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Can there be two unique? Uh, uh, can, can there be two stable matchings or not? Okay. Yeah. 
think about it it's a uh, it's similar to the notion of equilibrium which uh, yesterday professor might have talked about uh, in uh, game theory lecture uh, there's this nash equilibrium i don't know if you guys understood i'm sure you would have followed so there could be multiple equilibria yeah in general but there could be scenarios where it could be unique equilibria i'm not sure uh, about this case yeah you got it it's similar to an equilibrium you can think of right yeah any other doubts okay so the applications could be refugees to countries countries may have preference over refugees refugees may have preference to countries and kidney exchange this is a very uh, life saving algorithm it's been applied in many kidney donor experiments that do, because typically you pay uh, the same family people cannot donate kidneys uh, in the same family there are some restrictions so you could potentially get a donor from a some other hospital if a patient is in one hospital now how do i map to which donor to which recipient maybe i have a preference over some particular uh, maybe like i don't uh, have some some preference over whatever some caste or something like that maybe so there could be preferences on either side so now how do i match in a stable way okay and projects to interns this is a summary of solid tool and this is the main uh, uh, honor which these two people uh, very stalwart researchers alvin roth and lloyd Sh shapley got for the theory of stable allocations and practice of market design and this they very recently got uh, unfortunately i think lloyd shapley passed away just recently about a year back or so i think yeah so it's a huge loss to the researcher community so he has done very seminal work in game theory mechanism design his uh, his style of working is like he produce one paper in every 3 years and that paper will define research for next 3 decades it's like that so he's a very stalwart uh, researcher uh, so and uh, he is uh, a very good experimental economist so he actually does it on real world uh, applications he's more of a theoretician whereas this person is a, it's a very good combination of theory and experiments if you can see okay so now i am running out of time 10 minutes okay thanks so maybe now i think uh, most of you got a good example of the applications wise are you liking this area or is it very drab <laughs> okay so another application important application is elections and uh, elections we face every day and uh, suppose i just take an example of the upcoming presidential elections and this is like a very hypothetical scenario so i am not biased to any political party or something so suppose there are three presidential candidates for the next president of india it could be narayan murthy this could be anna hazare uh, and who is this ha huh? no yeah kailash satyarthi uh, he is also a nobel prize prize winner so he has done lot of work also for the society and all i mean i just usually president of india is a very uh, honored position usually you have to be very eminent in the in the whichever area you are so i just picked uh, three of my own choice and now there are two voters uh, and they are uh, thinking whom to vote for and now the options they have is basically uh, they if both of them vote for anna hazare then anna hazare is the winner right and if this person votes for anna hazare and this is for narayan murthy then we'll toss a coin and it's a uh, 50 50 chance that either of them win this is called as this type of elections is called as a plurality voting so this is also a part of mechanism design how do i decide from the individual votes of the candidates how do i decide a winner it could be as simple as one vote i am now putting this guy is putting one vote that could that guy is putting one one vote that uh, uh, woman is putting one more vote but it could be typically i could give a preference as well i could give a ranking okay i value uh, anna hazare more than uh, uh, narayan murthy and more than kailash satyarthi something like that if i give a preference of my candidates now how do i aggregate and make a particular guy as a winner or particular candidate as a winner so that's where mechanism design comes and that's a very huge uh, area of voting theory which basically deals with this problem and this is also a very active area which lot of settings are quite different you assume something you don't assume something then the results change it's a very active and very interesting area similar to cake cutting or the matching problem so there are plenty of ways to vote 
So suppose I, I am in a scenario where I rank all the M candidates. Maybe I'll just give a flavor of the possible things. One is the Borda vote, sorry, um, where uh, I have some point system for the rank. I give a uh, rank for, uh, I give M, M minus 1 points for the first preferred guy, M minus 2 and so on. And I add up the points. Then whoever has the highest points gets to, is the winner. And there could be plenty of others, scoring based mechanism. There is also pairwise. So I, oh, I have an election for two people at a time. Then whoever wins, I'll uh, conduct another two, I'll conduct and then so on. Pairwise elections I conduct. That could also be, there are many variants of that. And uh, there is also another more uh, complicated ways to uh, figure out the winner of a voting. So you can see this Kemeni style, there are STB voting. So I would, I just thought I put it all this so that you can just go and uh, later on, maybe if you're interested, you can just look it up, the, look up these methods. And these are, each of these methods are very interesting. That is all about uh, voting I had. And uh, the last uh, application I had for you to get uh, acquainted is the auctions, which I started off with the bullet, my, my favorite bullet. And uh, basically in auctions also, there are many mechanisms. Mechanisms uh, which for one item auctions, there are multi item auctions. There are combinatorial auctions based on the what the auction is going to do. So just I'm considering one item auctions. There is this English auction. Anybody has heard English auction? What is an English auction? I'm sure everybody has seen, but you may not have used, uh, I mean, known that it is English auction. If I have a painting, I put the painting here. Now, I s how do I conduct an auction? OK, each of you. Yeah. Yeah, each of you start shouting out, right? 100, 200, like you see in movies, right? So whoever shouts out uh, 100 and then uh, next, uh, he increases to 101, next 103, so on. So that's the English auction. It's an ascending price auction. Each bid should be higher than the previous bid and whoever is the last bidder, he wins. This is the typical Bollywood uh, movie auction. Okay, And Japanese auction is... Uh, uh, is also another type of uh, auction and uh, Dutch auction is the descending price. Um, that is also like I go with a very high price and I start decreasing it and whoever agrees to the price first is going to be the winner. So this is typically used for perishable goods like flower markets, right? So in the morning I have to sell off the flowers quickly. So I show some flowers and I say that this is uh, 1000 rupees per kg. Who is interested? And then I will say 990 and I keep decreasing and suddenly I will say 500 and one person stands up. I give the flowers to him and carry on with the next. That's it. So it's a faster auction and it's used for perishable goods. So and there are the sealed bid auctions like I initially told. And, uh, and in the sealed bid auction, there are these first price auction and second price auction. In the bullet example, for example, it could be that I said the highest bidder is going to win the bullet and he's going to pay whatever he's promised me to pay. But it could be that a slight twist to the tail could be, uh, I declare the highest bidder as the winner, but he should pay the second highest bidder's bid. That's, that's a very important auction called second price auction, <coughs> excuse me, which is also called as a decree auction based on the person, economist who invented this auction. And uh, this type of second price auction is currently used in many places because of very attractive properties. One property is being the truthfulness property. So if you analyze this type of auction, second price auction, it's, uh, it can be calculated that it is dominant strategy. I mean, it's the best uh, for you as a participant in the auction to bid your true valuation. There's no, uh, irrespective of what other, there's no sense of competition in this at all. If you want to have the best chance of winning in this second price auction, bid whatever you think truly. If you think this flower is uh, 900 kg, don't bid 10 rupees, 900 per kg, bid 900, that's best for you, otherwise you'll lose out. So this is a very in interesting property and there are lots of equivalence relations. You could see that Dutch and first price are somewhat equivalent and it could be second price and Japanese or English. There are some lots of equivalence relations between them. Uh, if you just go into a little bit detail about the way the auctions work, you could see that many of these auctions are related to each other. So I am not going into that details right now, but it's also very interesting. So the way of conducting is totally different. It's essentially you're doing the same thing. 
So there are lots of results in that aspect. So maybe uh, I'm almost running out of time. Okay, so maybe I should uh, uh, wind up. So just uh, take home this fact that the weekly auction is truthful. Okay, so I don't want to go into this as of now because of lack of time. But if you're interested, you look it up. And uh, it can be very easily uh, argued based on other bidders. Like if you assume something about the other, what the other bidders could bid and what you could bid, then whatever the other bidders bid, it's best for you to bid your true valuation. You can argue it out. So game theory mechanism design is mostly about reasoning. You have to just logically reason out. So this is one very good example of where uh, analytical reasoning will help you in uh, understanding this area better. It's not much about, uh, too much about maths and all. It's more of reasoning. Okay, so, so far no math. So this is the only math slide and I'm ending it. And uh, so this is the area of mechanism design, which is if you see, go back and see, it's a very, very mathematical area. So it's best if you get used to some of these uh, sort of names and uh, notations uh, in case you want to study further in your future career. So there are these typesets, which is possible bidders, what all you could bid, and uh, what you report is could be something different from what your actual type is. And there's a social choice function, which basically is how do you decide who is the winner? That is what this function is doing. And uh, this is the outcome, the, who is going to be the outcome. And this is the utilities of the agent. So based on this outcome, each of you, each of the agents will get some utility. And the agent's point of view is to maximize their utility, but uh, the mechanism designer's point of view is to choose the most optimal outcome. So there's a conflict there, and the mechanism design is basically uh, trying to address this conflict. Okay, that's it. And uh, so as I told you, I hope most of you have some flavor of the area, and uh, it's a very interesting area between as I told you, it's an econ CS area. So there's a lot of research groups around the world today working in this area. And uh, in mechanism design also, there are plenty more uh, variants of or uh, sub areas of mechanism design. Uh, you could also look, if you're more of an uh, algorithm person, then you look up on algorithm me algorithmic mechanism design. And uh, if you're more of an optimization person, then you can look up automated mechanism design. And uh, if you're more of uh, online, there are online, uh, settings now, online mechanism design, this, and if you are more of a distributed person, distributed computing and all, go for distributed multi uh, mechanism design, there are many variants, and it's a very uh, rich area, uh, I would encourage you to have a look at this area, and if you are interested, go do something in this area. I think that, that there are some key uh, references for this presentation, as well as, there's a very important book uh, from our uh, institute only, from our department, Professor Narahari. Uh, he has written a book on game theory and mechanism design, which is aimed for introductory uh, students. Like it's mainly in, uh, aimed for a UG guys. So you should probably buy this book. It's, uh, it's in the market now. It just released about uh, a year back or so. And there are plenty of other works which are a little bit more involved. But if you are starting off, I would recommend this book, and then slowly uh, go for the other references and many more which I not got uh, space here. I think with that, I should thank you all. Sorry, I overshot by about 10 minutes. Do you, ha do you want to ask any special question? Do you want to ask any qu any question, any, anything special? Which no, you I heard? think uh, they should ask questions if you want. Okay. So yeah, I hope you guys got a flavor of the area. If you have any questions, either drop me. Uh, we are in the Game Theory Lab. I am from the Game Theory Lab here only. So there are a lot of good okay. students there working, PhD students, masters. So come around, have a chat, and feel free to write us a mail or something. Okay. okay. Any other queries? Yeah. So in the cake cutting algorithm which you explained, uh, the person who is cutting the cake, isn't it unfair for him? In the I am cutting the cake. I am not part of the game. I don't want any cake. The, 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 the cutter is game. not part of the game. Yeah. I am just wanting a proportional fare. The end agent, this is the n plus one the agent is the mechanism designer. So I am doing the kick. Okay. So that's the kick crux. 
if i leave any of the interacting agents to do a decision themselves the other agents will not trust that person so there should be a trustworthy entity who can take a decision fairly among all the that's the crux so the mechanism designer is assumed to be only uh, working in the societal benefit whereas the individuals are working for their own benefit the mechanism designer will be moving the life right as you told according to that algorithm yeah so the first person can de can decide to shout at any uh, time first person in the sense first or any any other three persons can decide to shout at any point of time yeah. so what if he decides to cut to shout at a point of time when he can get a bigger uh, piece of cake i didn't get your question actually no see you keep moving the knife from left to right yes so uh, now assume that you are at a point where, where the left portion of the cake is bigger in size the left no, portion no, it cannot happen bigger because yeah. what happens is if i go and i reach one third i am at one third assume yeah. now somebody has to shout there i mean as as a person what you will be thinking is if suppose you say okay i'll wait for some more time then it could happen that somebody else will shout out and get the one third and you will end up losing out that one third also hmm. right that's the effect okay so you will be under pressure to call out okay that's the crux consider that it's a multi agent setting that's very important if mm. you are alone you can do whatever you want but yeah. that's a traditional optimization problem is all about single agent optimization this is all about multi agent optimization okay thank you okay so uh, let's thank robert once again yeah, and uh, we are running a pretty tight schedule so if you have any more questions please take it off now right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. i'll be around in the game theory lab for some more time Yeah. Drop in or drop an email to me. You can ask. You can just contact the game theory lab in the department. Okay. So let's give a big round of applause.